Martin with Lisa Louise Cook's Genealogy Gems podcast. It's my job over at Genealogy Gems to keep my eye on our genealogy giants. And so I'm here today with one of our four giants here with Find My Past. And I just love what you do over at Find My Past. I'd like to introduce you to a couple of their star players. So this is Tamson Todd, CEO of Find My Past. Hello, Tamson. Hi, Sunny. And then this is, and Ben, remind me what you do. Uh, so I look after our, some of our emerging businesses, so things like Tree and other other pieces like that. Well, you got some exciting things to talk about with that, right. don't you? That's right. So first, I'd like to like to let our audiences get to know you a little bit. Sure. You're kind of a fresh face over at Find My Past. How long have you been there now? I joined Find My Past in September, so about six months. And what's the ride been like? And oh, it's fantastic. I mean, it's so great to join a business that has a brilliant brand known for its expertise deep British and Irish records um, so you know all of that is is, is just fantastic um, we've been investing in our technology a lot for the past couple of years so you know again just joining at a time when we can really you know move and get things done it's really really exciting and of course the whole industry is is growing and changing so it's a really vibrant exciting time it really is an amazing time in the genealogy world isn't it it seems like as I cover the our genealogy giant websites, I'm updating things all the time because yeah. things are changing. New <laughs> records are coming. New technologies are coming on yeah. the sites. Speaking yeah. of which, you've got some exciting things to share with us today. Tell us about your new tree. So one of the one of the things we announced during during our keynote is this notion of Find My Pest has always had private trees and private trees are great. Everyone, you know, you can find a private tree sort of anywhere. And we'll, by the way, we'll continue to have private trees. Okay. No change, no change uh, for people who who want to have a private tree. But this notion of community and collaboration um, is is really key, right? And and we've, what we've looked at is we've said, okay, uh, we could go build another collaborative community-based tree like okay. Genie or Wiki right. Tree or something like that. And we decided, we actually, we looked really hard at all of these different models and decided, you know, the, the, if we started with the customer and worked backwards, they want a shared community tree that's accurate and that is evidence-based, but we don't need one more shared tree. And so we looked at it and said, all right, what if we combined efforts with Family Search? We worked together there, used the same data on the back end, but, but potentially a different interface on the front end in order to ensure that, that it has as much accuracy as possible. And so that's one of the areas we're spending time on. And we, we're doing a preview. We said, listen, it's not a product launch, but it's a preview today. Um, you know, for people to see, and so we're excited about that. So I got a chance to look at that, the preview experience for your tree, yep. and so basically what I'm seeing is the, the Family Search Global tree, but it's been pulled into the Find My Past experience, That's right. and so I'm using Find My Past to, to search that tree yes. there, and right now it's just a search, but that's going to become operational and right. something that I can delve into and, and be it's interactive exactly right. with. Yep. in the coming uh, weeks and months. That's exactly right. So tell me why I would want to search the Family Search tree in your environment on Find My Past rather than just yeah. staying over at Family Search. Well, so there, you know, we think there are a number of number of reasons um, to do that. I mean, one is one is that you know you you'll, you won't get our records, so Find My Past records within Family Search. Um, you know, we have twice as many Irish records as anybody else. Um, you know, more English parish records than anyone else. Um, but there are a number of other features that we have in mind. Tamsin, any, anything you'd want to add there? Well, I think coming back to this, this notion of the community and how you know, we, we do family research, right, to find out more about ourselves, but also to connect with our ancestors and to connect with each other, which is, um, you know, part of kind of the joy of, of, of doing family history. So... So, you know, that's something we really want to build in and build in in a way that the, the, the kind of knowledge of the community okay. and um, the artifacts and the data of the community um, and the, and the um, advice of the community, for example, you know, getting under the hood of British and Irish if you haven't done your British and Irish ancestry before, right? The, 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 sh the sharing mechanisms for that. At the same time, we recognize that there are um, the genealogists who've gone really deep, who have fantastic trees that they might want to publish uh -huh. but might not want to kind of be part of the community right. um, piece, but they may well um, provide a reference for the community, okay. you know, become a really kind of valid, trusted source for the community, and also benefit from the hints and tip tips against the depth of the British and Irish records that Find My Past has. So we're looking to a way that they can participate too, in a different way. Um, right. Yeah. So the eventual goal here is that you'll be 
um, able to use the data in the family search tree, but directly apply all of those marvelous and distinct individual records that you've got over, um, and including the fabulous newspaper collections that you have there, British Irish newspapers. I love those millions of newspaper pages. That's something that's one of my favorite features and fairly unique in terms of the, the depth and breadth of newspaper content on our genealogy giants. It's you guys. Yeah. You do really well at that. Yeah. Thank 24 you. 24 million pages and counting. And right. counting. And I counting. keep seeing more that's added. Right. And right. then you also offer plenty of us in the U.S., plenty of millions of newspaper pages we can search here in the that's U.S. Right. too. Right. So I really appreciate that about Find My Past. So you don't make us wait to get our ancestors across the pond before we get to explore some unique resources in those U.S. newspapers, and particularly also in Percy, yes. in, the, in, yes. the, in Percy and in your marriage records and a lot of your U.S. collections. That's right. So I also heard something about some new migration types of records, transatlantic experience. What's going on with your, your with this new feature on your site? Well, so this is the, it's the, there's two pieces. It's the British Roots Collection. Okay. Uh, and the British Roots Collection, what we did is, is you know, we normally think about sort of migration records as, you know, uh, ship's manifest records and things like that. And, and, you know, you can go search those. But what we did is we, we said, you know, there's lots of other records. There's, you know, land records or state censuses where somebody said, or a marriage record, and somebody said, hey, you know what, um, I, you know, the, the father of the bride was from Ireland. So okay. what we did is we took all of those records and put them into one large collection where there was any event like that. So so you might not go to you know to look at the Ohio State Census to right. find out to, to find that somebody said they were from England. But we put it in one large collection so that you can actually search that and then see those nuggets come out. Right? So you've curated sort of for us details. records That's of exactly our immigrant ancestors <laughs> by flagging their immigrant That's origins exactly right. in US records. That's exactly right. And then connecting them into integrating them into your own records that right. are that originated across the that's pond. Right. So yeah. that's a really great approach. I think that will probably help a lot of us make that trip back across the pond much more pleasant, certainly than our ancestors was, that's but right. maybe than our own experience has been so far. That's fabulous. Anything else you'd like to add, Tamsin? Oh my goodness, there's so much to talk about. I'm I, another thing we've done recently that is just really fun, um, is, is, and it's going to be relevant over the next couple of years here as well. Is that so? We've just had the 100th anniversary of the first women in the UK getting the vote. So we worked with the National Archives to pull together um, the suffragette collection, and um, yeah, it's a collection that that, that you can um, you can see if you have ancestors who are suffragettes. But there's a whole lot of social history around it as well, the newspaper archive and so on, and um, and. Um, uh, it's just another way, you know, to take to take the records and, and look at a different kind of lens of history that that might not come across in, in, in some of our kind of everyday work. So, and, and that's something that we're thinking about a lot with the U.S. and anniversaries coming up as well. That's so, right. Yeah. The same anniversaries coming up. I particularly yeah. appreciate that your suffragette collection yeah. does focus on the women who get left out of a lot of our old records. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of our foremothers we don't know a lot yeah. about, and especially some of those suffragettes might be our heroes, yeah. if only we knew. Yeah. And amazing right? stories. Amazing stories. In, the, in that yeah. collection in, in particular. Yeah. Amazing stories. Yeah. yeah, they really are. So thank you for publishing that collection and shining the light on some of these women who really are brought to pass something really such so important. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks so much for taking a few minutes with us here at Busy Roots Tech 2018. It's been a fantastic experience. I hope you're enjoying it. It's brilliant. And thanks Absolutely so much. Brilliant. Sunny, so, thank you so much. Thanks, Sunny. Take care. This is Lisa Louise Cook, and thanks so much for joining us here for our Rolling Out the Red Carpet YouTube series. Now be sure to click that red subscribe button here on our YouTube channel, and that will get you notifications as each new video comes out. Thanks so much for watching, friend. I'll talk to you soon.